Hey everybody, this is May. We're here at ZenkaiCon 2019 with Monica Riel, known for Froppy and My Hero Academia and a lot of other things. And we're going to talk anime. So how are you enjoying the con? Oh, it's been awesome. Everybody here is so sweet. I've gotten so many gifts. I'm like, you guys, I'm going to have to buy another bag to go home. But yeah, it's been rad. Everybody's super, super awesome. Now, do you do a lot of cons? I do. This year, I think I have like 28 plans. <laughs> I, I'm not going to forget what my house looks like. Um, but I enjoy it. You know, I love going out and meeting people. And it's the only time I get to like geek out about anime with other folks. So uh, I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> Great. No. Doing conventions, do you have a favorite fan experience? Oh gosh, there's so many good ones. I think the ones that really stick with me the most are the like the real sentimental ones. Um, I had a gentleman come up to me in Hawaii at a convention and said, I just want to say thank you because my mom, this is going to get real dark, y'all. I'm going to apologize. But he's like, my mom was dying of cancer. And the one thing that we did together before she passed was we watched anime together every day because it made her smile. And I just wanted to say thank you for making the last moments of my mom's life. And I was like tearing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But thank you. So those kinds of things are the the most awesome because, you know, we do the thing and then it goes out into the ether and you kind of forget that people watch it and it touches people's lives. And so that's what's so great about coming to cons and hearing these stories. It's like it's affirmation in what we're doing. And then you go home and you want to do an even better job because it's like, OK, now I know that these these stories are touching people's lives. So I want to make sure that I give it my all. So, yeah, it's always good to hear you have a positive impact. Yeah. Getting into the technical stuff, can you explain key differences between voicing something new or voicing something that you're dubbing? Yeah, so if you're doing, like we call it prelay animation, and basically what that means is you go in and you do all of the recording and then they animate to the sound of your voice. And then the difference with ADR, which is um, automated dialogue replacement, basically means that you are working with existing animation and then filling in the holes that way. And a lot of people seem to think that we reanimate the mouths we don't. <laughs> we don't touch any of the animation. So that's a little more difficult because you have to be able to match cadence. I call it math acting because not only are you like doing a certain voice and what is your motivation as an actor and what is this? And you have to fill the flaps and it has to be the syncopated beat. And so that's really difficult. What's difficult about prelay is that you don't have that visual. So like uh, recently working on Genlock with Rooster Teeth, you know, the director would stand there gray and he would say, OK, now I want you to visualize you're standing in front of this big computer console and so it's up to you to have the imagination to put yourself in that place whereas with anime you get to see it and you're like oh that's how I feel I can see it her eyebrows are furrowed okay great so that's a big challenge there is getting used to one or the other but they both have their pluses and their minuses Kind of like when an actor has to pretend they're looking at a monster on a green screen. Yes. I've always wondered, like, I always feel bad for those, like, you know, big name movie actors. I'm like, wow, when you see them and it's just one little person in front of a giant green screen and they're like, OK, now pretend this giant monster is attacking you. That's got to be so hard. Like, seriously, that's one thing about being an actor is you can never lose your sense of imagination because you'd be out of a job. Now, have you found a difference in voicing characters in games as opposed to a series? Most definitely. In games, you know, it's a lot of that prelay stuff. So what they'll do is they'll come in and um, sometimes there'll be some animated sequences that you'll be able to see your character in action. But usually you get like a piece of paper that has a picture and then they're like, OK, this is what we want it to sound like. Go. So improv is a really good skill to have for voice actors. Um, one of the ones that really threw me off, I'm in Borderlands 2. And when I walked in, I was I didn't know what I was cast as. They didn't tell me. And they hand me this picture of a gun. And I'm like, you mean pew pew? Like, what do you want me to do with that? I don't know. And they're like, no, no, we want her to kind of sound like a like a like a Jewish mom. And then she's gonna give the player a hard time because they suck so bad. And I'm like, okay. So somehow this voice came out of me like, that man might have had a family. How could you do that? And they were like, yes, like that. And it was so ridiculous. They just kept adding lines for her. And she ended up being like one of the most popular guns. But I had no idea what I was doing that day. I literally walked in, was handed a picture of a gun. And they're like, make something. <laughs> so yeah, you definitely have to be able to think on your toes. And video games can be very difficult that way. Also, if you finish early, then they're like, well, we've still got time. So can you play these like 30 ancillary characters in the background? So then you're like this robot and that teddy bear and this thing over here. So it's a lot of fun. But yeah, it can be super challenging. A lot of inanimate optics you're playing. 
Yeah, especially in Borderlands. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so many inanimate objects. <laughs> Among all these various characters you've played, especially, this is getting interesting, what two would you like to see either team up or fight? You know what? So they kind of just asked me that in my panel and it took me forever because I'm like, I'm up to almost like 550 characters. So it's funny in your brain, like all of those characters, you see them and they're kind of like, pick me, pick me. Um, for the panel, I chose a really, really odd pair. I chose a stalking anarchy from Panty and Stalking and Bulma from <laughs> Dragon Ball because I felt like the two of them are so totally different. But if you put them together and made them a team, they would totally take over the world. And everybody would have cake and all of the dishes would be clean. It'd be awesome. <laughs> are there any projects you're currently working on that you can talk about? Uh, oh, I can't. I'm in a show called the, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. I'm playing a character named Tear. Um, we're currently working on the last season of Fairy Tale, where I play Mira Jane. We're currently working on uh, season three of a Certain Magical Index, where I play Index. Um, and I'm sure there's other stuff that I can't quite talk about yet. Um, we did just announce uh, Mitsuboshi Colors is a show coming out from Sentai that I'm working on. But there's a lot of good stuff in the works. I just can't talk about it yet. Well, we will put your social media down here so when you can talk about it, people will follow you. Awesome. Okay. Anything you'd like to say to your fans as we wrap up? Yeah, I would say thank you guys so much for all of your support and stuff. I just celebrated my 20th anniversary of voice acting, which is crazy. Um, and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys. So thank you so much. And please come out to all of these 27 cons I'm going to this year and come say hi and hang out with me, please. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for watching. And as always, have fun and follow your fandom. This is Goku. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, yeah!